Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. I'm Mike Cobra, a weed specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. I'm here with Joanna Fallings, our provincial cereal specialist, and we're tackling the issue of sulfur deficiency. And so Joanna, if we look across the province, do we, are we starting to see more sulfur deficiency pop up and, and why? Yeah, so in the last number of years, we are seeing sulfur deficiency more, particularly in the winter wheat crop as a result of cool, prolonged springs. So we're seeing less mineralization. And as a result, as you drive through the countryside, you're seeing these sporadic yellow patching throughout the winter wheat fields. So I suppose uh, most people are familiar with the need to start getting a little bit of sulfur on their wheat crop. Uh, what's the best way to, to deal with a sulfur deficiency issue? So the best way to, or to deal with a sulfur deficiency in season is to apply either ammonium thiosulfate in a liquid form with your nitrogen 28% or with ammonium sulfate with your dry fertilizer, your urea nitrogen uh, in a broadcast application. But I suppose there could be an issue where you've even done that and maybe the deficiency is, is so bad that you still see some, some localized areas pop up. You're going to go across the field with a sprayer uh, to do uh, herbicide applications or fungicide applications. Uh, do you get questions about could we mix uh, ammonium thiosulfate with herbicides? Yeah, so we do get questions where growers didn't get a chance to get their sulfur on, the deficiency showed up a bit later, so they're wanting to go in and apply with their herbicides. Um, Historically, we haven't really known what that, what kind of injury that can cause, so we decided to, to put that to the test here at, in yeah. Woodstock. I guess like if we thought, think about UAN, sometimes that can really burn uh, wheat leaves, so maybe ammonium thiosulfate would do the same. So what we've done here at the Woodstock Research Station is Joanna and I put together a protocol where we look at uh, six gallons per acre of ammonium thiosulfate. So that's what we're putting across all the plots. Uh, but we're doing two different things. We're adding one different herbicide. So we've looked at a lot of the common herbicides in Ontario. And then the second thing is we looked at different levels of water volume. So some people believe that if we mix more water, we dilute the ammonium thiosulfate. Maybe we see less leaf burn than if we used a lower water volume. So six gallons of ammonium thiosulfate uh, with 14 gallons of water are in half of our plots and then that same six gallons per acre of uh, ammonium thiosulfate with four gallons of water are on the other half of the plot. So at the end of the day we have 20 gallons per acre water of a, a, a carrier versus 10 gallons and so now the, the, we're 12 days after application here uh, we can share with you some of the observations that we've seen. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look. So we're here nine days after our herbicide applications have been put down. Uh, you were here a couple days after. Uh, what did you see in terms of injury? So two days after application, when driving up to these research plots, it looked like a checkerboard. Uh, you could pick out the research trial amongst all the other research plots in this winter wheat we have here. And it was quite brown across all treatments in all four replications. So just squares of brown on, the, on just, is that just leaf burn or was there uh, anything else? So there was mostly just leaf burn. Um, but then the interesting part was coming back. We're here now nine days later mm -hmm. and we essentially drove past the trials, not being able to pick it out yeah. in this winter wheat. So yeah. we've had a, a significant reduction in uh, injury in the winter wheat field here. Yeah, I think it's safe to say two days after application, you would have been on the phone to the agronomist going, what the heck? <laughs> And now exactly. pretty pretty good now whether that matters for yield or not who knows um, from a herbicide standpoint uh, what I observed was uh, kind of no matter when you added a herbicide to ammonium thiosulfate you definitely increased the level of crop injury maybe doubled it maybe tripled it what were your thoughts I would agree I would say some uh, there was no real difference necessarily among herbicides but there was definitely a difference between the herbicide mixes and ammonium thiosulfate on its own right kind of an important point not herbicide injury per se but actually just leaf burn that uh, was kind of indiscriminate didn't matter what mode of action what herbicide group it burned there is maybe one herbicide that didn't burn as much and of course everyone's like well what's that one uh, this is one trial one year uh, thank you very much I'll wait to get more information before I'm too brash with that uh, last thing is because everyone wants us to look at uh, different water volumes maybe water volume is a savior uh, what what say you you have younger eyes my eyes are not as good what what 
Did so you see? that's the interesting part. We did 10 gallons as well as 12 gallons of water as a carrier, and we didn't find any different real differences amongst the different volumes of water. So that's yeah. something that, again, we need to look at going forward. Um, but it was really interesting because yeah. you would think more water, less injury. Yeah, we doubled the water. You would have thought possibly less injury, more injury, depending. Uh, but we, we didn't observe anything. I'm sure if you sat there long enough, or stood there, either way, long enough, you would pick out a difference, but we didn't. So what, what's the next step? So I think next step will be taking this, uh, these trials to yield mm -hmm. and looking at the yield data and seeing if we see any real differences amongst the treatments and if there is any real yield impact or if it's a visual um, thing for a few days in yeah. the field. Yeah, what is the, it clearly injures, right? We add a ATS to a herbicide, it injures. Is the, so that's a risk, is that risk worth it if we correct a deficiency and improve yield. And that'll be the ultimate question. What's the yield penalty, penalty of injuring wheat with ammonium thiosulfate and a herbicide? My last question, Joanna, because I don't know the answer, and I don't care as much about fungicides. Could we add a fungicide? Would that be any safer than a herbicide? Or So a similar question I think would go with the herbicides that we don't really know yet. It's something we haven't done yet, and it's something we should look at going forward. And it's something of interest as we do see sulfur deficiency showing up later in the year in some years, and growers are wanting to reduce the number of passes they're making across the field. Yeah, so more work for you to do. That's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back in the fall and provide you with some yield data at this site.